Hey, Terry. It's one, two. It's your boy, Rod. We be back with another deal. Today, we react to Wild Silver vs. Wild Fan. The war between Young Thug and Wild Fan Gucci. Without further ado, let's get into it. They're running the rap game for the last 10 years. But behind the music is a culture of crime, gangs, and violence. Two of ATL's hottest rappers been in the heated beef over the past few years that's led to threats on social media and violence. Let's dive into the war between Young Thug and YFN Lucci. Young Thug is one of the most influential artists in the game. When he first came into the industry, people were shocked by his wild behavior, fashion sense, and unusual delivery. But over time, Thug gained a... Respect for being a true pioneer who paved the way for a new generation of rappers. Thug grew up in the Jonesboro South Projects in Atlanta's Zone 3 neighborhood. He was the second youngest of 11 kids. Most of his siblings were in the streets, so he jumped off the porch at an early age, around eight or nine years old. He started selling drugs and getting into fights in school and was even expelled in sixth grade for breaking the teacher's arm. For that, he spent the next four years in juvie. In an interview with Rolling Stone, he said he didn't have anything to do in juvie except gamble, fight, and f Thug is a He said he didn't have anything to do in juvie except gamble, fight, and f No, hell no. Nobody got no money. No, hell no. He ain't had nothing to do with you, but gamble, fight, and f This man. He said he didn't do it. He didn't say he didn't do Like, why he locked up? So, why he fucking niggas, man? Thug is affiliated with the Bloods from Cleveland Avenue, one of the main roads that runs through Zone 3 by the projects where he grew up. They used to call themselves the ROC crew or Raised on Cleveland. Thug was always the trendsetter and also looked at as a leader in his hood. So, he started his own crew and brand called YSL, which eventually became his record label. YSL has been labeled a gang by the police, but Thug and others denied this and say it's a family and music collective, which stands for Young Stoner Life. According to Thug, YSL wasn't created to commit crime and violence, but to create legal opportunities for his friends and family. And if you look at Thug's accomplishments and what he's achieved in the music industry, it seems like it's been a success. Some of the first artists Thug signed were his day ones, Gunna and Lil Duke, with other names later coming on board, like Brothers Lil Keed and Lil Got It, Yak Gotti, Strick, T Shine, Unfook, and a lot more. In a short amount of time, Thug built his own empire. Fire and made a promise to make all of his friends rich. One of Thug's early contributions to the rap game was using the word slime to refer to a friend or homie or just a slimy activity. But it was first used by New York rappers like Nori, who used the term in a tweet back in 2009. Then it was popularized by Young Thug, who dropped a series of tapes in the late 2010s called Slime Season. Since then, the term has been used by everyone from Playboy Cardi to Drake, showing how influential Thug is. Young Thug made his debut in 2010, appearing on the song She Can Go by True Royal. Then he dropped his own solo mixtapes called I Come From Nothing Parts 1 Through 3. This caught Gucci Mane's attention, who signed the rapper to his 1017 label in 2013. Thug then dropped the project 1017 Thug that same year, which got high praise from fans and critics and earned attention from magazines and media, who included the project on several year-end lists. So it seemed like things were really heating up for Thug. After Gucci got locked up in 2013, Thug started making more moves in the industry. Yeah, <laughs> Up for Thug. 
After Gucci got. I locked up in 2013, Doug started making more moves in the industry. He linked up with Birdman and Rich Homie Quan to form Rich Gang in 2014, leading to rumors that he might sign with Cash Money. Then, in 2014, he dropped the track Stoner, which became his breakout hit. On the song, he even shouts out his old crew, dropping the bar. Hear my song, way from YCC, ROB, SMN. Now we YSL Venom. YCC stands for Young Thugs in Charge, and ROB stands for Raised on Cleveland, what the Bloods call Cleveland Ave, where Thug grew up, and SMM stands for Sex, Money, Murder, which is an East Coast gang. So basically, he's talking about how he ranked up through other Atlanta gangs to make his own collective. But while Thug was blowing up in the industry, another rapper from Zone 3 was also gaining the buzz. YFN Lucci is a rapper who grew up in the Summerhill hood of Zone 3, not far from the Jonesboro projects where Thug grew up. Lucci went to Southside High School and played football. But after practice, he said he and his friends used to be in the streets trying to make money. Lucci's from a blood set called ABG, or Atlanta Blood Gang, which is a branch off of the Inglewood family bloods from Los Angeles. He, his brother, and their close homies would form their own clique called YFN, which stands for Young Fly. Just like YSL, Lucci denies that YFN is a gang and says that it's just a music group and record label. But police look at it differently and say it's an influential set of the bloods that Lucci controls. Lucci's brother, YFNK, was the one who encouraged him to start rapping, along with his best friend's older brother, Big Nut. Big Nut was a respected dude in Atlanta who also had ties to Young Thug and the ROC crew. He heard Lucci's music and believed in his talent, so he started plugging him in with people in the industry who could help his career, including his current manager, Fly. Fly also managed Rich Homie Quan, who was featured on the track Exactly How It Was from Lucci's first mixtape, Wish Me Well. At that time, Rich Homie Quan and Thug were still close because of Rich Gang, but there wasn't any beef between YSL and YNF. But as Thug was reaching the top of the rap game, and YNF. Wife and Lucci was building a buzz for himself, a crucial event will cause a big split in the city of Atlanta. In January 2015, Big Nut was killed in a drive-by at a barbershop on McDaniel Street in the Castleberry Hill neighborhood of Southwest Atlanta. Nut was standing outside the barbershop when a car drove by and someone fired an automatic weapon. Another dude in his 20s and a 14-year-old boy also got shot in the leg but survived. Even though police ain't have a clear motive, they said the shooting was gang-related. Big Nut was a major figure in Atlanta, and his death was a loss to the city. Besides being close to YFN Lucci, he was loved and respected throughout Atlanta's hip-hop scene. It's not clear who killed Big Nut since his murder was never solved, but there's rumors that the YSL crew had something to do with it. Even though no one was ever caught, Atlanta police said Big Nut's death sparked as many as 37 other crimes, including four murders. So not only were the streets of Atlanta hot because of his death, it also led to a major split in the local rap scene. Lucci often talked about how much Big Nut helped his career and was a genuine. What, what, what they say he had? He had to come through with 37 crimes before murder. That shit, they saying after he got killed. After, after, after that guy, it made, made shit hot. Shit. Oh, yeah, and it added shit. Yeah, added to some shit. Oh, yeah, and it added to some shit. Oh, yeah. They want revenge type shit. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, and it added to some shit. 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 Oh, yeah, and it and things played out in the streets too. In an interview with Karen Civil, Lucci said that his childhood home got shot up multiple times, including once where his mother and her friend.
They have, well, they you have know, a They say Lucha and Blood J beefing. Yeah, they say Thug and Blood J cool now. They have a song or something. They just dropped. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? He was talking about that when he was out. Blood J been out for years now. You know, he ain't got a lot of I mean, Blood, that used to go crazy. You used to know, man. I know you fished. We gonna get it. We gonna get it. We gonna get it. Man, who about it? Go to the eighth grade, but I ain't right. He had some fun. I lost a woo. Yeah, man. Him at the Black Port and it too. Yeah. I know about the Port. You know, I used to make out blood too in middle school. You thought you was blood trip? I thought I was blood, bro. <laughs> Frank got caught in the crossfire. He don't reveal who shot up his house, but based on the timeline, may think it was the work of YSL. This just tightened the tension between both sides, and not long after, YF and Lucy and Thug got into a public war on social media. In February 2016, YF took shots at Thug by going after those closest to him. First, he went at Thug's fiance, Jerica Carlay, implying that they slept together in the past. He tweeted, I know you miss laying on that sofa with me, girl. Hashtag Rika. Even though he ain't mentioned her by name, fans knew who he was talking about. He followed that up by tweeting, I got your on the leash, and Fly took a rich Can't do nothing but respect him. But he ain't stopped there and continued going, saying he had text messages that proved he and Jerrica have been involved. Lucci tweeted, he gonna cry when he see these messages. Following up with, go follow my Instagram right now, send me 100K followers, and I'm uploading them. Let's go. Oh, Lucy must have gotten the cloud he was chasing because he ended up posting the supposed messages and it looks like it is between two people who are about to hook up but there's no telling if the other number is really Thug's fiance. It shows Lucci asking the girl where she is and she responds saying eight minutes away. They send each other love and kissing emojis back and forth and Lucci even tells her, about to jump in the shower, what you doing? And you should have gotten in with me. Lucci continues trolling by adding Jerrica and tweeting, miss you bae. Then he turned his attention to Thug, tweeting a bunch of L's and by the way, nobody wants your punk ass cuz baby boy inside her. Thug wasn't entertained by the trolling and tweeted back, shout out solo Lucci, young king. Then followed up with, you just trying to get on. And if any upcoming rapper want to be put on, let's make music. I don't want to be. But if that wasn't shady enough, Luigi continued going at Thug a few days later by tweeting a video of his daughter with the caption, happy B-Day baby girl, along with a bunch of hashtags, including long live nut forever. Thug is known to be very protective of his daughter and once threatened to slap plies for calling his daughter a in an interview with Sway in the morning. Thug ain't publicly comment on Luigi's Most of his daughter, but it's likely there was consequences behind the scenes. After that, the beef died down for a little while both was focused on their careers. Thug was rising to the top of the rap game, hinting that he was working on a joint album with Kanye while also appearing on two songs on Drake's More Life project. Thug then dropped his fourth official mixtape, Jeffrey, in 2017, which was a critical and commercial success and quickly went viral because of his famous cover art of him wearing a dress. YFN Lucci was also making major waves in the industry, dropping the track Every Day We Lit with PNB Rock in late 2016. That song picked at number 33 on the Billboard chart and was one of Lucci's highest charted singles. He followed this up with the EP Long Live Nut, which was dedicated to Lucci's dead homie, Big Nut. 
Later that same year, Thug released his fifth project, Beautiful Thugger Girls on June 16, 2017, Tupac's birthday. A few days after, Thug let the world know he purposely dropped the project on Tupac's birthday because he feels like the new Tupac. Thug tweeted, I dropped EBBTG on Tupac's birthday because I'm the hashtag new pop. I feel like I'm the thug he didn't get to become. Hashtag, so I'm gonna finish what he started. YFN Lucia responded by tweeting, Pac would have never worn a dress with a clown emoji. Thug then went on a Twitter rant aimed at Lucci, ending it by saying, doing too much could become a deep sleep. So this beef wasn't just online, it had the potential to get very real. In 2018, Thug's right hand man YSO Duke was involved in a shooting where he almost lost his life outside the Magic City strip club. Surveillance footage from outside the club shows Duke leaving and being followed by two men. He turns around and sees the dudes coming for him, so he starts running as one of them pulls out a pistol and starts firing. Duke runs around the car while the man is shooting, but luckily the bullets miss and he gets away. The shooter got arrested and rumors were going around that Duke snitched, but Duke later posted the paperwork confirming that he didn't snitch. It's not clear exactly what caused the shooting, but it's been said it was tied to the beef with YFN. Something must have gone down that fans didn't get to see, because in 2019, Thug got back on social media and threatened to slap YFN Lucci and Houston. Some rapper Sauce Walker during the Instagram live. It's not clear what caused the diss, but it sparked a heated back and forth that reignited the beat. Lucci responded to Thug by posting the video to his own Instagram, calling Thug a gay slur and telling him he's not slapping nobody. He even called Thug a punching bag and a h Sauce Walker responded with his own post, showing young Thug with a boxing trainer along with emojis as captions, including one of a woman in a dress. Thug clapped back at Lucci, telling him again that he would slap him the next time he sees him in public and that my teeth cost more than your broke ass life, boy. So the beef was back on and it wasn't just for social media. A month later, wife and Lucci's car got shot up in Atlanta. Police arrived at the scene and found the victim suffering from two gunshot wounds, but it wasn't wife and Lucci. The victim told police that he was driving when shots rang out, spraying the car and hitting him in the shoulder. The Mercedes G-Wagon belonged to Lucci, but was registered in his mom's name. So police assumed the bullets were meant for Lucci. Not long after that, someone spray painted the word slat on Big Nut's grave site, taking the beat to new lows. Slat is a blood phrase used by Young Thug and other YSL members. It's not clear if it was vandalized by an actual YSL member or just someone chasing clout, but either way, it added fuel to the fire. Thug would drop his debut album So Much Fun in 2019 and throw subtle shots at Lucci on the track Just How It Is. First, he drops a bar justifying why he wore a dress on the cover of Jeffrey, rapping, had to wear the dress because I had the stick. This was also the line Thug said to Adam22 on the episode of No Jumper, claiming he had an AK under the dress. Even though this bar ain't directly about Lucci, he was one of the haters who clowned Thug for his fashion choice. Then Thug rapped the bar, last try me, almost got popped in Lennox. This bar is talking about the situation between Young Thug and YFN Lucci at Lennox Mall in Atlanta. It's not clear exactly what happened, but Lucci responded directly to the bar, posting to his IG story with slides that said, cap ass album, and boy almost shitted on himself in Lennox, no cap. Thug responded to Lucci's comments by adding him and saying, if I didn't like what you do for your mother and kids, I would have been killed you, with a bunch of crying emojis. But that ain't the only time YSL and YFN had a confrontation at Lennox Mall. About a year later, Thug's artist Yak Gotti posted a photo to Instagram of himself standing on the trunk of Lucci's car in the mall's parking lot while throwing up the middle finger. Around the same time, a YSL member named Snakeface posted a video of a YFN chain claiming he jacked Lucci or another YFN member. 
on just how it is. Young Thug raps, n stole a chain, but I ain't worried, fool. Which might be a possible motive for the chain snatching. YFN Lucci ain't even respond to the alleged chain snatching, but he did respond to Yak Gotti standing on his car. He hopped on IG Live and said he saw Yak Gotti at the mall and he just dapped him up. It wasn't until he left that people started telling him that the rapper was standing on his car taking pictures, which he considers a weak move. So, it seemed like the beef was getting out of control and it was only a matter of time before things got violent. But before it reached that point, YFN Lucci would get himself involved in some serious trouble with the law, which threatened both his freedom and his career. In January 2021, Wife and Lucy was accused of being the driver in a drive-by that left one man injured and another man dead. Police say that Lucci, along with three other gang members, drove through the Ops hood in December of the previous year and opened fire on another group of men. The other group ended up firing back and a man named James Adams who was inside the car with Lucci got shot in the head. Adams was then thrown out of the car and left to die on the side of the road. Later that same day, Kevin White, a dude who's believed to be one of the men Lucci was So the question is though, who told? Who told the nigga? The nigga who got shot had to. He died. He died. Oh, two niggas got shot. Oh, one got thrown. One got shot. So they threw both of them out the car. Nah, they threw one on. One nigga got the car. Nigga who died? He got threw out the car. I'm just saying though, bro. You gotta be a green ass nigga. You got all that money. And you telling me you the driver? That's what I'm saying. Like, you, the, you the driver? Like, you put your fake car? Like, what the fuck? His crew shot, showed up at a local firehouse with a gunshot wound to his stomach. He was brought to the hospital and survived. Lucci's accused of being the driver and not believed to have pulled the trigger, but he was still charged with murder, aggravated assault, participating in criminal street gang activity, and possession of a firearm during the commission of a felony. Lucci turned himself in and then posted a $500,000 bond but he violated the conditions of his bail by going to a recording studio and then the strip club. To make matters worse, the prosecutors say the strip club he went to was the scene of an alleged gang-related shooting that led to the drive-by that got him locked up. So his bond was revoked and he got sent right back to jail to await trial. If that wasn't bad enough, a few months later, Lucci was involved in a Georgia State Rico case which accused a bunch of bloods of various crimes from murder to racketeering. Police used the rapper's social media and music videos to time to other blood tests from Atlanta to Miami. They claimed that YFN was not just a record label and music group, but an official blood set, and that Lucci had used his position as a famous rapper to order crimes on behalf of the gang. They used his participation in the drive-by shooting that killed James Adams as evidence, as well as another incident where Lucci supposedly strangled a man for playing his op's music. One of the dudes arrested alongside Lucci for the drive-by was Rayvon Boyd, who's a rapper from Miami that goes by the name CP3. Another rapper caught up in the indictment was Buddy J, who collabed with both Thug and Lucci before Big Nut died when he sided with Lucci. Prosecutors claim that Lucci and CP3 were attempting to unite the Bloods in Atlanta with the Bloods in Miami and use their music as a way to make money for the gang and diss their enemies. The dissing led to real violence in the streets, including the shooting where Lucci was allegedly the driver. Even though most of the evidence against Lucci is indirect, it's still gonna be a tough legal battle and he'll be locked up as he fights the case. So, it seems like his petty beef with Young Thug will be put on hold for the moment while he fights for his freedom. It don't seem like Thug cares to continue to beef either. In an interview he did with Big Boy back in 2019, Thug said the Nipsey situation changed his whole perspective and he don't want problems with anyone, including Lucci. So, it seems like the beef is dead for now. Lucci's life is on the line and the last thing he needs to be doing is beefing with another rapper. Meanwhile, Thug is still at the top of the rap game, recently scoring a feature on a number one song with the Drake and Future collab, Way Too Sexy, as well as the number one album with his recent project, Punk. So really, he has nothing to gain by beefing with another rapper from his city who's facing a Rico charge. Hopefully, this beef stays dead and no new threats or info has the two rappers back at each other's necks. If I got to the point where I can, you know, 
Bro, you know, know, you know the reason they're going to see the shit, bro. And then they're going to be like, yeah, okay, cool, he got it. I'm like, bro. If you rap out type shit, they rap about though. Yeah, but shit. You got to If you get old, bro, these niggas in their 30s, bro. 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 They in their 30s, bro. You get too old. It really ain't no one who carries you on sometimes. It be the niggas around No, but look, they spark the shit, though. They do it. But the. The beef gonna continue with the low niggas. You feel what I'm saying? Cause they ain't like last summer they was still going at it, bro. Nigga, they not get that, bro. But it's still to this day, bro. They gonna go at it until. Just when I see you, if I see you, that jet. I don't know how these niggas gonna listen and stop beefing. The low niggas and these two niggas stop beefing. And long as the tension up between them two niggas, bro. Yeah, they gonna be tension. Oh, it's just somebody died. I mean, shit. Gucci and Wayne got a cool with them. Oh, it's in me. Oh, G. Yeah, man. So he's talking about old dead pop. Man, what the hell are you doing? Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah